I think a logical starting point uh, for this podcast would be the one seed. So as of my Monday projections, I had Virginia, Villanova, Xavier, and North Carolina, which is a little bit of an interesting decision. Brett, who did you have in your Monday projections? In my Monday projections, I had the top three, just like you had with Virginia, Villanova, Xavier. Not much separation there. Pretty clear cut, Villanova still the favorite over Xavier with those two wins over them during the regular season, even though Xavier looks like they're going to come out on top with the Big East title. One seed, I did have the Kansas Jayhawks, much like bracket boy Joe Lenar we had for ESPN. I kind of favored Kansas in this one, too. they 23 and 6 now. 12 and 4 on the season as of Monday. They have moved up since then with a win at home on senior day. Devontae Graham and company taking care of business. But Kansas has just looked dominant over the past few weeks. They picked up that big win on college game day at Texas Tech. They beat West Virginia twice. They had the neutral court win against Kentucky. Solid RPI wins in those quadrant one wins that the committee is looking for and when they take into account. On Selection Sunday, when they look at Kansas, when they look at Duke, when they look at North Carolina, they're going to see that Kansas is 11-3 overall against 101 opponents with the number eight strength of record. Their um, Ken Palm RPI rating is a two. Their RPI is a five. And they, they just look like one of the best teams in basketball right now, and you can't deny that. There were a lot of thoughts a few weeks back that Kansas necessarily wasn't going to be going to be a three seed necessarily and they just turned it around won their 14 straight conference title and now Kansas is on a roll so they came in as my fourth one seed right now they're not moving off that line when my new bracketology comes out after Thursday night's contest tomorrow all right so uh what do you think about me having North Carolina on the one line now granted this was before they lost to Miami I have Kansas in there now like you do but I was one of only four brackets on the matrix on Monday to have North Carolina on the one line do you do you uh what are your thoughts on that? I don't think that's too crazy. I was kind of debating. I looked at that final spot because obviously I was going to put Virginia Villanova 1-2. I looked at Xavier for a bit to see if there was anything that could pull them off that one line. There isn't yet by the end of conference tournament time. Would I be shocked if they moved down from that one seed line to maybe a two? No, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Yeah. They are at the three for now. And then looking at the four, it was down to those three teams, like I mentioned, with Kansas Duke. Michigan State previously, but after the big wins that North Carolina had, after the big wins that Duke and Kansas had, Michigan State just doesn't have that resume to compete with them anymore or that one seed. Granted, they could still go on to win their conference tournament. Maybe they play a Purdue and Michigan beat them both, then there you go. There's two quadrant one wins in their favor looking at that one seed. But Duke, Kansas, and North Carolina, basically you're comparing which one of those ACC teams is better than the other right now. And to Kansas, because you're not going to compare both the ACC teams for that last one seed. When you have Kansas sitting here, like we said, been a 3 11 and 4 quadrant one record. So the strength schedule is there for Kansas, and I looked at it and decided that Duke had the slight edge over North Carolina. And believe it or not, the game that it came down to for me deciding that was the win for Duke mm. 82 78 over North Carolina, and they're going to play each other again this weekend. So, again, game that's going to have another impact in the game that the committee's going to look at because when you get those head-to-head matchups you're trying to side seeding the head-to-head really does come into play because if you're a team that only plays each other once for example texas and alabama and if you're two teams sitting on the bubble at the end of the day you the team that lost may just find their way into the nit because that's just mm-hmm. how it works if you lost to that team you have really similar resumes bump up so that's basically what happened for me and i compared duke to kansas and like we mentioned before the quadrant one is just in favor of kansas in that one so that's why they were my four seed there 